All right, let's look at problem number 29. Uh, in problem number 29, we want to look at an optimization problem. And the optimization problem is a rectangular flower garden with an area of 30 meters squared is surrounded by a grass border uh, one meter wide on two sides and two meters wide on the other two sides. Okay, and uh, the picture of this would look something like the following. So we've got this rectangular garden, and we've got kind of some margins to this garden. And on uh, two sides, we've got two meters. Uh, similar over here, this is two meters. And on the other sides, this is just one meter. And this is one meter, okay? Uh, so what dimensions of the garden? In other words, this garden has some dimension to it. Um, one side of this garden we could call X, and the other side of this garden we could call Y. So this is also X, this is also Y. And what dimensions of the garden minimize the combined area of the garden and the borders? So we're not trying to minimize the area of the garden. We know what the area of the garden is. It's 30 meters cubed. What we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the area of the garden plus borders. Okay, so uh, now that we've got our picture here, we've labeled some appropriate things, we need to figure out, okay, we're trying to minimize the combined area of the garden and the borders. So we need a formula for the area of the garden plus the borders. So in other words, we need a formula for the area of the big rectangle, right? Well, it's the length times the width of the big rectangle. So the area that I'm looking for here is the length times the width of this big rectangle. Well, if I'm looking at this length of this big rectangle, well, it's x plus the margins, right? So it's two here, it's x here, and it's two more here. So it's really x plus four, right? Two plus x plus two is x plus four. So that's the length of the garden plus the border. Uh, the width, if we're going this way, it's y here plus the margins. But there's a 1 here, there's a y here, and there's a 1 here. So that would be y plus 2. Okay, so our first two really important steps are done. We drew a picture. We have a formula for the thing that we're trying to make big or small, which is the area of the combined border and garden. Uh, and, but the problem is we have two different variables in that formula. So we need to get rid of one of those two variables using any extra information that's given to me in the problem. Well, fortunately, we do have some extra information, and that is that the garden itself has an area of 30 meters squared. So if I just look at the area of this small rectangle, I know that that's 30. In other words, the length times the width of this little rectangle, or x times y, we know that that is 30. So I could solve for either x or for y and get this thing in terms of just one variable. So let's solve it for y. So I get y is equal to 30 divided by x. And now I can take this y and replace y up here with 30 over x. If I do, I get that the area is equal to x plus 4 times, well, y plus 2. But y, now I know, is 30 over x. So this is 30 over x plus 2. And if I wanted to make my life a little bit easier, maybe I would multiply this out before I do any sort of calculus to it. 
But I got ultimately what I wanted, and that is what is the thing I'm trying to make big or small? The area of the outer rectangle. And I have that area in an equation that just involves one variable, x. So now I'm ready to use all the calculus that I know to find the optimal length for x. Okay, so let's do this. Let's multiply it out really quick just to make it a little cleaner. So x times 30 over x is just 30. x times 2 is 2x. Uh, 4 times 30 over x is 120 over x. And then finally, 4 times 2 is 8. I could clean this up a little bit more. And what I get is that the area is equal to, well, I've got 30 plus 8, so 38. I've got 2x plus 2x. And I've got 120 over x, so plus 120 over x. All right, so now I am ready to take the derivative of this guy. So let's do that. Uh, I've got dA dx, which is equal to, well, the derivative of 38 is 0, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 120 over x is negative 120 over x squared. So now that I've got a derivative, I can set it equal to 0, solve for x, and see what my critical point is, or points. So I set this equal to 0. 2 minus 120 over x squared. Uh, so 120 over x squared is 2, or 120 is equal to 2x squared. I could divide both sides by 2, and if I do, I get that x squared is 60, and that x is the square root of 60. Okay. So x is the square root of 60. Um, now that I know what x is, I should be able to find y as well. How do I find y if I know what x is? Well, y is equal to 30 over x. So I can say, OK, now that I know what x is, one of the dimensions is the square root of 60, then I can figure out y. y should be equal to? Uh, 30 divided by x, but x is the square root of 60. So y is 30 over the square root of 60. So, and uh, what are my units in this problem? My units are meters. So this is the square root of 60 meters, and this is 30 over the square root of 60 meters. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably simplify this down a little bit, simplify the radical a little bit, but ultimately these are the right dimensions that would optimize this problem.